Hi everybody, welcome back to Art and the Word. I'm your host, Nicole Georges Bennett, and I am your paint guide as we produce another beautiful, lovely painting and help to develop the talents that God has blessed us with. So if you have an interest in art and you've never had a chance to develop them, well, this is the show for you. I show you how to do easy, simple, but lovely paintings that you can be proud of. So of course, because this program is called Art and the Word, we will have a bit of the Word program. So we're gonna jump right into our devotional for today. I always like to start the show with a devotional, usually that ties into our theme, but as you can probably tell, we've got a very dramatic uh, galaxy style painting that we'll be doing today. So what I've done instead is I've looked up a devotional that I think will probably be very impactful to you. I hope so. And this one comes from a little devotional for graduates. Um, someone gave it to my daughter when she graduated from middle school. Um, and it's called Loda. And this one is called Forgive, period. And we begin in Mark chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Unforgiveness is downright dangerous. It will make your spirit weak and your prayers ineffective. It will pull the plug on your faith, so much so that you won't have enough power to effectively live as a Christian. In Mark, Jesus didn't say, when you stand praying, try to forgive, or when you stand praying, forgive if you can. He simply said, forgive, period. Jesus made forgiveness a command. It wouldn't be right for him to command us to do something that we couldn't do. So you can be sure it's within your power to obey his command and forgive, no matter how badly you've been hurt. Most people don't realize it, but unforgiveness is actually a form of fear. Quite often, we don't forgive because we're afraid of getting hurt again. We're afraid we're never going to recover from the damage that person has done to us. If you want to forgive, get rid of those fears. How? By filling your mind and heart with God's promises that apply to your situation, as we see in Psalms 119. If you'll do that, I can assure you, your feelings will change. It may not happen overnight, but it will happen. One of these days, almost without thinking, you can throw your arms around that person, give them a big hug and say, I love you, friend. What's more, you'll mean it from the bottom of your heart. So that is our devotional for today. And very interesting, and I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about. And there's a little scripture that goes here. It says, I forgive those I have anything against so that God can forgive my sins. And again, referring to Mark chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. So there we go. Forgive, period. I know, easy to say, um, hopeful that we could do that in our hearts. But according to the word, it can be done. It's a command. And the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to be able to forgive those um, who have trespassed against us. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. But for right now, I want to talk about our painting. So as you can see, I have begun this particular painting because it's more like a two, three day painting. And I actually got the idea from this from one of those Facebook groups. I think I mentioned that to you last time. And um, it's one of those where they've got these fantastical, magical type of uh, photoshopped paintings. And I saw something similar to this and it really captured my imagination. So I love um, paintings about galaxies and, you know, the, the planets and skies and that sort of thing. So this one really appealed to me. I'm giving it a shot. So today we won't be able to finish it all in the program. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding in some more details. And hopefully we should have something that's closer to finish by the time we're done. And you can get a better idea as to what the finished product should look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by adding a bit of color around this particular planet and I'm going to try to do something that's sort of a nebula. I'm still kind of working out the the type of brushes that you would need to do you need to use to get that sort of soft nebulous effect. Still experimenting. Okay. 
And uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm just sort of prepping this area because I'm going to add in some blue sort of clouds. I'm just laying, laying the, uh, the base down for that. How are you today? I'm so happy to have you joining me. I'm always thrilled, you know, to be able to look in the comments and see that, uh, you know, that there are people watching and they've got opinions and comments. So feel free to let me know what you think of what we're doing, and what I'm doing here. And uh, yeah, if there's anything you'd like to see me try to paint, and I do mean try, just let me know. I'd be happy to give it a shot. All right, so we've prepped that area. And what I'm going to do now is a mix of blue and white. So you may still be reflecting on our verse for today and wondering, well, Lord, how, how do I get from this position of unforgiveness in my life? And you know, unforgiveness is such an important thing to deal with in your life that when it comes to having communion, the word actually says that if you are about to have communion, you know, the, the bread and the juice or, or wine or whatever it is that represents the body and the blood of Christ, it is such a solemn thing and such an important part of worship. It says if you get that far, you get up to go and have communion and while you are on your way there or you get to the altar or wherever, and you remember that there's someone that you have ill will towards or someone you have a grudge against or someone you've not forgiven. It says you need to leave and go and make that right before you come and take communion. And um, I believe it was um, Peter who said, and you can correct me, that it is because of unforgiveness and accepting communion that there were people at the time in the church who were not well, who were sick in body and who had actually died. So you can see just how important it was that we don't harbor unforgiveness in our hearts. And I know for a lot of us, me, myself included, you know, you probably can maybe look back and think to an incident or an event in your life where someone hurt you, you know, grievously perhaps, and you thought to yourself, I can never forgive that person for what they've done. And the Lord says, I have forgiven you of your sins. I've loved you even when you were unlovable. I loved you even when you were sinful and you were in rebellion against me. And he says, you now in turn forgive others. And it is through the power of the Holy Spirit that you're able to do that. It's not just a question of just saying, okay, I forgive this person. And you know you don't mean it. Deep down in your heart, you don't mean it. You have to start asking the Holy Spirit to give you the, the ability to be able to truly forgive. So the good news is that you don't have to do it on your own. You don't have to kind of just, you know, fake it till you make it. So what I'm going to do now is, oh dear, that green happening. Just going to add a, just a touch of blue, light blue. Just trying to get the right shade here. Uh, to add to our blue planet, we've got some little nebulous glass gases or clouds coming from it. And you know, there, there's all sorts of studies that have been done about what forgiveness, unforgiveness and bitterness does to you mentally and physically, not to mention spiritually. Spiritually, it cuts you off from the Lord, right? I'm just sort of uh, making these little shapes, you know, to show that it's clouds. 
I'm going to use my fan brush to try and sort of get that sort of ethereal feel. Sorry, you're, you're going to hear a lot of scraping. <laughs> Still trying to work out which brushes are the best brushes to get that effect. I've seen, you know, various people using uh, round brushes or round head brushes. It hasn't quite worked out for me yet, but um, I'm persevering. Just working to try and get a, an interesting shape happening here. So there have been several um, pastors who have heard talk about what unforgiveness does for you. And um, as we just read there in our devotional, it can actually cause your prayer, your prayer life to become ineffectual. Sort of uh, closing up the, the, the the ears of heaven so to speak if you've got unforgiveness if you're and I'm not talking about you've tried to forgive and you haven't been able to I mean that's got its own problems as well but we're talking about deliberately refusing to even entertain the thought of forgiving someone But with God, all things are possible. And you may be thinking, well, you don't know what this person did to me. And you're right, but God knows. And he gives you the ability. He gives you the power of the spirit. If you are a believer, he gives you the power of the spirit to be able to, to, be able to forgive and also to, to mean it, to, to forgive in a meaningful way. I'm doing my, my best here to try and get some interesting cloud shapes here. I'm using some highlight as well. So I really hope that if you do have a problem with unforgiveness and that there are things that you're holding on to in your life, just start by saying, Lord, I don't really want to forgive this person for what they've done, but help me to want to. And I think that that's a good place to start, being honest about it. I'm just using a, actually this is a makeup brush <laughs> that I'm using for my, my blending. So if you are um, someone who's really into astro astronomy, not astrology, sorry, you're probably looking at this and I'm sure, you know, for all of those people who follow this, you know, look at the stars and are very interested in how galaxies are formed and that sort of thing and you're saying what you've got there is not very realistic miss nicole and uh, my response to that is yes i know this is meant to be a work of fantasy it's just supposed to be something very eye-catching and interesting to look at I really hope that you'll think about what we've been discussing today, reflecting on it and just looking perhaps at um, the areas in your life where you need to let go and let God ask him to give you the courage and the strength to let go of the fear of being hurt again. 
and to be able to forgive and to love the person who has hurt you. That, again, is a gift from God. To be able to do that is a gift from God. It's not something we have the capacity to do in our own strength. Maybe sometimes you find yourself reliving the old hurts and you think to yourself, you know, wow, I thought I had forgiven this person and moved on. Like, why am I reflecting on this and getting all upset again, all over again? I think that's just a human thing. And I think the key thing is to just sort of say, Lord, I, I commit this, I recommit it to you. So uh, what I'm going to do now is add a bit more blue to the center of our planet. The sort of the dark side of the planet here. And then we'll add some lighter blue shades to the side that's facing our
Well, folks, that's as far as we're going to get today. So as you can see, we've added in a bit of color to our sun, as well as some highlights to our two planets and some more cloud work. So like I said, this painting was probably going to be another two days or so until it gets to where I think it's going to um, be. I'll say that's enough. So we'll add in some stars and that will be our final touch. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing this very different painting and also that the word for today really impacted your heart. Thank you very much to our sponsor, eFlow Hair Salon. Thank you. And everybody, hope to see you next time on Art and the Word.
Hello everyone, it's Christine again. Uh, this is um, Crafting with Christine, a um, part of TLC Art Class. And this is a presentation for the Lakeside Church Toronto. So um, I just want to give a little thank you to Naomi, my friend Naomi, who gave me this But God t-shirt. And um, it has a special significance because last week I was going through some, you know, some challenging times with things to do at work. And um, I was just sharing it with um, my fellow teachers, Nicole and Joan. And, um, you know, I was just sort of saying, you know, this was going on, this was going on and this was going on. And at the end of it, I said, but God. And then I went to visit Naomi and Naomi pulled out this t-shirt and said, I'd like to give you this. And it said, but God. So I really took that as a message from the Lord. And, you know, it was very encouraging for me. And so I just want to say thank you to Naomi for that blessing. So today... We, as we're leading up to Christmas, we are going to go with a nativity theme. And um, I just felt like I would like to create some um, displays um, because I see that some of the other uh, ladies have already started doing some displays. So I was like, okay. Let's do some displays, but, you know, let's see what I can do that will be able to um, teach you something else. So um, the first one is going to be a gold one. And um, this is what we are uh, going to head into now. Hi, everyone. It's Naomi Kanaika. As we start doing this beautiful craft with Christine, as we are closer to the dates of Christmas, as we remember Christ's birth and how he came as a baby to die for you and me on the cross, and he was the light of the world. And we can see during the birth of the Christ that the story, we can see there was a star in the sky. There was a beautiful big star in the sky. And this star was there to lead the Magi, the kings, the three kings that came looking for Jesus from far away. These three kings brought gifts for Jesus as Jesus and laid it at the feet of Jesus. And we're going to talk about these three gifts that these Magi, the three wise men brought. The first was gold. And gold represented that Jesus was a king. Truly, Jesus, the savior of the world, who is the light of the world, is the king, king of kings, the lord of lords. And gold represented he is as a king. And the second gift the wise men gave was frankincense. And frankincense was a symbol of that he is God. Frankincense was offered to a God and uh, frankincense symbolized that Jesus Christ is God. Really, he is God himself who came down for you and me. And the third offering, the third gift that the three kings gave, the third king gave was myrrh. Myrrh is usually uh, a symbol of suffering a symbol of death and at the birth of Christ God already planned for the third gift to be more to symbolize that he came to this world to die for you and me for our sins so these three kings followed the star that beautiful biggest star in the sky and that star led them to the manger to the stable that Jesus as a baby was there with Mary and Joseph and the angels were worshiping him and the shepherds came from far and started worshiping Jesus and the three kings bowed down and worshiped Jesus. Truly 
Jesus was the star of the world. Jesus was the light of the world. He came to this dark world and that time, during that time, that was a season where people have not heard from God for so many years and darkness was filled in the world. But Jesus came as a light and that day is a beautiful day that makes us sim symbolize and makes us have salvation because of Christ's birth on that beautiful day. So as we celebrate Christmas, let us all remember the reason for Christmas. The reason for Christmas is not anything else but Jesus Christ and his birth. It reminds us that he came for you and me to die for our sins so that we would have eternal life with him. God couldn't save us in any other way but send his own son Jesus to die for you and me. So let's remember as we do this beautiful craft with Christine and celebrate Christmas time with our families and loved ones, let us remember that Jesus is the reason for Christmas and Jesus is the light of the world. He came to this dark world and gave us light. He opened our blind eyes. He forgave our sins and He is our Father. He is our God. He is our Savior. And Christmas Day, we also remember His death and the resurrection. And the most important thing is His coming again. He is coming again for you and me. Yes, for you and me. He's coming again for the second time. And He's the light of the world. He will come not as a baby the next time, the second time. He's coming as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Savior, the Ruler. He is coming to take His bride, His church, His children to be with Him in heaven forever and ever. We have great plans for us everyone so God has great plans for you and us so let's use this opportunity to tell as many people the meaning of Christmas the reason of Christmas and Jesus is coming again and to have our hearts ready and have a heart of expectancy waiting for his birth waiting for him to come again the second time waiting for his return as these people were waiting for uh, the savior of the world so many years ago and they had a baby baby Jesus but for us we are having expectant heart for him to come back to take us to heaven to be with him forever I hope you were blessed today I hope that you remember that he Jesus is the light of the world and he's coming for you and me soon enjoy your craft with Christine and I wish you all a merry Christmas and may God bless you all and protect you all and keep you all in joy in peace and in happiness and he is he is with you God loves you so much have a wonderful day enjoy your craft God bless you bye for the first one I'm going to um, do I got this and I I'm just showing you this part of it I found this turntable Again, in the dollar store, you can see how much it is. It's a, a turntable for a spice rack, a little plastic thing. Um, it was black in the middle and white outside. And I decided I'm going to use that for um, one of my trays. So I didn't like it black, of course. And so I did a quick spray paint, just a, a matte white over it. But this is going to be covered, so it doesn't need to be perfect. It's... Um, I just put like one spray in it so you can see that there's still some parts that really could do with an extra but because I'm going to um, cover it with um, something then I don't need to do any more so um, and here it does go around like this now I don't want to use this only for Christmas so whatever I put on here I'm just gonna lay it on so that I can take it off and um, use this thing again later because I, I think it's very useful. So um, what I decided to do, again, looking at what I had, was you may have remembered that not so long ago I made a repurposed tray um, from um, a photo frame. 
Okay, so the first one, the mat I used, um, I cut it wrong, so I had to get another one. So I had this left over. And so I'm going to now use this as a basis for this thing here. So I am now going to um, lay this down and cut. I'm, I'm going to mark a circle and cut around this so that it fits right inside um, of here. And once again, as I said, I wanted to use it for Christmas, so that's why I'm using the gold, but I don't want it to be gold all the time because I intend to maybe use it for another season. So um, let's do that first process. So I'm just pressing it down in the circle. And as I press it, I'm marking where um, it comes to the, the edge. I'm just using a um, black marker. So I'm pressing and turning the table just to be able to get exactly where I want this piece to lay because I, as I say, I'm just trying to use what I have left. And so I don't need to spend as much money in the dollar store. So you can see I've gone all the way around and um, made a mark um, right here. And so now I'm gonna cut that out. So now that I've cut out this um, mat, I've cut out my circle. This is um, a mat that uh, was at the dollar store for Christmas, a place mat. Um, if you don't have a place mat, then um, a lace can, can work or, um, you know, even those paper doilies could go on top if you want to. Or if you don't even want to um, have anything extra you could just paint it and leave whatever um, that color is whether white black or um, beige whatever your color and just leave it um, painted like that this one did have some um, good patterning on it so you know you could it, you could just leave it white um, me of course I've got to do something different so I'm just going to lay this inside my um, turntable and you can see it so I, I, I like the look of that okay so um, again because we're repurposing I did have this piece that was from um, a, a previous I don't know it was some previous thing it was green as you can see I didn't um, spray all of it and I just again sprayed it gold um, I just like the fact that it had all these beads on it and it seems like it's the perfect size for my tray. So I'm just going to lay that down on there and look at that. That's already looking really nice. Yeah, so that's my um, first layer. So for this, this kind of trays, we, we just want to look around and see what we can use to put on there and I know some of you have already been like um, making some interesting centerpieces and um, so you've already got the idea of that kind of stuff but um, I'm just gonna find some things and put it on here and show you how I'm gonna make my centerpiece for the first one so I found a bunch of things um, that are going to be all on the same gold um, frame. I found this little um, dove from, I don't know, something that I took off. Um, I found these that I had spray painted um, a little while ago for the, um, the class, the craft fair. Um, I found this. And because I want to keep with the theme, Jesus, the light of the world, then I'm going to try to incorporate some candles somewhere in my um, 
my uh, displays. And then I also found this, um, which has the nativity scene on, but I'm finding that you can't really see it so well. So I think that I may paint it and do something with it. And um, it needs a bit of elevation. So uh, I found a cover that looks like it was from my ice cream container, but it's going to go underneath so that my um, main display can sit on top. So I'll just paint it up. And I think that's all I need. May I don't know, maybe I might put a flower or so with it, but I'm going to paint this and um, try to do something with this by painting it so that it'll show up. Um, or maybe I might, no, I was going to glitter it, but then I don't think Jesus, he was very humble. So I think I will leave my manger seem very humble. Just want to be able to have it be a little bit more um, prominent. And um, I'll just close this on the top of it. So let me get to that and I will show you where I get to with that. Now that I finished painting my uh, stand to raise it up and I've also painted this um, to make it stand out a little bit more so that we can see the manger scene. I'm just going to place it right on the top here and bring it to the back. I um, hope you can see it. So yes, there. Um, then um, next I'm going to put these two uh, candle holders in front of the manger. See, there we have it. Um, yes, let's come back. Yes. And now my Jesus, the light of the world candles go into the holder. They're working now, thank goodness. Um, then we have our dove, which is representing the Holy Spirit. He is going to go right there somewhere in front of our main scene. Yes, but let's see if we can get him standing up a bit more. Okay, good. And last of all, I have a poinsettia that is the same color as the gold tone that um, I'm just going to put in the corner here. Just like that, just because it's Christmas. And there we have our first um centerpiece and i love the fact that it is um movable if you want this raised up you can um put it on something like uh has to be fairly stable just like a plate uh, not a plate a dish and turn it upside down and then put the whole tray on it so they can be elevated but yes this is our first uh nativity scene that we have created from things that are in the house. This is my challenge today. So I uh, hope you like this one and we're moving on to another one. Our second project is um, going to be what we call farmhouse style. Um, I realized from watching YouTube videos that there people seem to have like a, a particular type of um, decorating that they will use or um, typical, typical kind of uh, branding for their creations. And um, it might be glitzy, it might be um, minimalist where it's just plain black or plain white or it could be farmhouse style which has a lot of wood in it so i thought that i was going to attempt a farmhouse style type of uh, display that also is christmasy but keeping with the theme 
Jesus, the light of the world. So I, first of all, pick this tray up from uh, the dollar store, of course, some time ago, because I had considered that at some point I was gonna do this thing. I like the fact that it was, you know, round handles. And now it's the perfect time to be able to attempt that since we're talking about different displays. Um, I also know that when it's farmhouse style, um, there's not a lot of glitz. Um, there is a lot of wood. In farmhouse style, there's a lot of wood. So I found this again in the dollar store um, and I realized farmhouse style this year seems like it's got a lot of check um, things in it or black and I think it's a black and white check as well but um, farmhouse style has a lot of wood so we're going to be using some wood pieces in our um, display I also picked up a whole bunch of other stuff um, again from going through my stash I was thinking that probably I would try to use this snow as the um, the, the base, but um, I do want to use these glasses that have been um, matte. It's a matte spray paint that is just like an acrylic paint, so there's no shine on it. And... Um, these were some anniversary, it said happy anniversary and my uncle and his wife were getting rid of a bunch of stuff and it was in the box. And so I spray painted over and I plan to use them in my display. The other thing um, is my other alternative is to use this mat. Because I plan to use the glasses, I thought mm, maybe this may not be very stable for my glasses so i need something flat so again um when i bought the gold uh placemat i also had a silver one and so this time i'm going to use my silver mat probably because it's going to be a, a little bit more firm to um have the glasses on um Farmhouse has wood, so this is my wood piece. And then I've got a few other, you know, little pieces of of, um, uh, of uh, picks that I have there. But in order to keep it, again, on our nativity theme, I found a very similar kind of uh, tartan, but this says Noel and I was like oh so cool I bought two of them and put the little white on because my theme is going to be you know um keeping the the white and the red and and the wood um I found these two and of course this is going to be like the song Noel Noel so um these are all the things I'm going to put together on my farmhouse decor um, centerpiece tray so at the moment i'm just going to talk so that you will be able to really see what i'm doing um, first thing of course we need to get a base inside of our tray now um, originally as i said i had thought about doing a kind of um snow scene and um you know i would have just bunched it up and put it in there and made it look like this however because i do intend to use the glasses and i don't want the glasses to fall i am going to use this tray this mat sorry instead and it just fits very nicely inside my um pan the next thing I am going to place is the major piece. So I have two tall pieces. Um, this piece 
and of course the um uh the the uh glasses that i'm going to use so i don't want this to be completely on this side i'm going to kind of slant it so that they both have equal um dominance so to speak so let's work with this piece first so um i've placed this then the next thing i want to do is place the other dominant piece which are my candle holders which is what i've made them for i've spray painted them so that they can hold my candles keeping in the theme of jesus um, the light of the world so now we've got all of our various pieces so i'm going to start by um, decorating maybe um, this wooden piece here so let's try now i'm not saying that i'm going to keep it this way but usually what i do is play around with it take pieces of, of picks put them put lay them down see how they look see if i like them in the position that i have them um can't see that there so that's no good um let's try it like this um and then maybe i would put maybe the poinsettia there and then i'll step away from it and look at it and see if i like that so i i i don't mind that but perhaps let's try something else and see if something else might work so um how about if i use this piece and positioned it here and maybe some of this and positioned it this way then i would go back step away from it and think do i like that um that's not too bad so what i could do then in this empty space is use my pieces of wood which are really my pine cones um, to put that on there so eventually you can see what i settled on um, having the straight swigs, uh, twigs um, from the tree and having this just tucked behind it and my little pine cones right in front and I really like the way that um, this kind of swept around one of the um, the uh, glasses. So I kind of like that. And so that's the way I plan to keep it, just so that one is exposed and one is not. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of this also to this side and that way oh i like how that turned out yes so again playing until we find what we like and now um i'm going to use this uh one because it it brings a little bit of depth to the fact that there's black in my check and everything else is white so it is doing that and then it allows me to position um, my Noel Noel oh that's perfect okay so the only other thing that I have is my poinsettia which I'm gonna just oh I just dropped it there my poinsettia which is just going to peek out maybe here i don't want the uh i don't want my pine cone to be completely lost in that okay so we'll just put the pine cone in front All right okay and we'll lean this one up we'll position it like this and put him 
here. I was trying to see if I could get one a little bit behind the other. So we'll see if we can manage that. Just slightly. And then all we have to put are the final touches, which is our candles I am putting on the top of the wine glasses. And there we have it. That is my very simple, but it looks really elegant for my farmhouse decor Christmas tray. So I'm just going to move it so that you can actually. So I just like to remind you about the first one that we did. This was our first tray display tray. Um, mostly gold in our table decor and still um, highlighting our theme, Jesus, the light of the world with our nativity scene on it. And now we're going to go to our second one, which I have just completed. And this one is our farmhouse themed um, table decor, which I think is very elegant. Um, I love the way it turned out. Um, this is uh, a, a different style. Um, but again, you know, we are still keeping with our theme, Noel, Noel, but I love the, um, I really love the way that this one turned out. So um, yet another style. And after this, we are stepping it up to a third style of centerpiece that um, I would like to be able to show you. I'm going to make a tiered tray or a tiered display. So for that, we needed to get a variation of um, plates. They, I've seen people use um, all kinds of containers or tray-like containers. I don't think you need to have um, any particular thing, you know, just as long as whatever you're using is either the similar size, that's one style, or it goes decreasing size as you go upwards. So I've chosen to do the decreasing size as we go upwards and um, I want a four tiered one. So I have um, bought a um, I bought a uh, charger to be my first level because I want that very wide and you can see because I already started this video and then had a issue so um, this is my second time around um, I am using for the middle piece, the things to balance the next level on, I'm using these dessert glasses that I got from Dollar Tree. I thought they were really cute um, idea. I would think I was thinking trifle or something, but um, thinking something mini, but I did buy two sets, thank goodness, because I'm about to use one set to be able to do my craft. So first and foremost, I have to say that you must have a very good strong glue to be able to make sure that this thing is well balanced. I'm starting it tonight so that it will have overnight to be able to dry. I'm using E6. Okay, so that's real life. Back to my E6000. E6000, the reason why I like it is because um, you have a little time to be able to do some extra repositioning. You need a strong glue, but I find that this glue allows you um, the time to fix things if it's not exactly perfect. If you use something like super glue, then um, that's going to give you uh, very little time to put it in position and make sure that it's right. So um, this is what we can use. Um, you could, I guess you might try using the glue gun, but then it depends on the material that you're using um, to be able to do that. And the glue gun will not stay um, forever, so to speak. So mostly people tend to use glue gun plus 
86,000. And you can get this in um, Walmart, in the glue section in Walmart. <laughs> I don't remember where, uh, where that was, but you can get it in Walmart. And of course, craft stores, but there's no craft stores open, they're all closed. So um, if not any strong glue, um, you can get your, your Gorilla Glue, I think would work very well. And um, that's around in um, some places. So I put my first level and what I did is draw a circle on each one of my plates where I think, I think you can see back to that one, each one where I intend to place it. And so I put the first one level on. Now I am about to put on the second level. So here you can see, I'm just positioning it like this. And now I'm going to put the glue on my, um, my glass and then place it in its spot. So I will come back to you. So once I place this on the second plate, now I actually have to position it so that it is in the middle and I can put glue on the, um, on the top of here. And probably I'll put a good amount of glue and there is a little bit of an indentation which makes it really, um, a good spot to be able to um, put a large amount of glue and then I'm going to put this on the top here and um, place the third one. So you can see I've got three layers already on and I'm about to put my um, last layer, my dish. Actually I'm going to just clean that up. Um, I'm about to put that right in the top so I have glue on there and I'm putting it right on the top and I am making sure that this thing is straight there it looks a little straighter now it's a little difficult for me to get to the top of it to look down on it. <coughs> so here is my um, four layers. <coughs> E6000 has made my throat very irritating, um, but I really need it to, to do this project. So you can see I've got my four layers in position and um, <clears throat> I'm going to leave that overnight and then we will continue tomorrow. So it's been a bit of a pause since I... Um, started this project but I am going to bring it closer so that you can see what I have done. Um, it's been sprayed with white matte paint. Um, it's very solid now and now I'm just going to do a quick um, ending to this video where I'm going to um, just show you how you can decorate this thing. So um, I have various pieces of, of materials that I'm going to talk about. Um, bits of sprig, um, poinsettia, these are false poinsettias of course. These were some green artificial plastic uh, pieces that I pulled out from the stock from the dollar store and spray painted it with the same paint here that I used and um, I have some other kind of contrasting sprigs and of course I want this to have uh, uh, a bit of height and 
because I want to still keep it with the same theme. So this one, I'm not going to put a lot of, of, of items on. I'm just going to use the decorating pieces that I've shown you. And uh, what else I did was I found this was a candle which I turned it upside down and sprayed it. And now I'm going to take it and put it on the top here to be the um, final piece that I will use for um, my angel, which I'm gonna put on the top in keeping with my theme of Jesus, the light of the world. So let's just begin to put these things together. So I'm gonna first start by placing my main flowers, my poinsettias, and I'm going to put them so that they are on an angle. So you can see this is where I put the first one. Then the middle one goes a little bit further in. And then the, the next level goes a little bit further round. So I'm going to turn it around like this so that you can see that I'm sort of moving from uh, a slant. This is what I'm trying to create here. So after I've put on the first level, I'm just going to go um, to the next thing, which are to use these pieces. And I'm just going to place them to the side. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to use three or four, but I'm going to try to see what three looks like. Okay. And then three on the next level. So just tucking it behind. I'm going to bring it a bit closer. So I'm tucking it behind the poinsettia flower and curving it in the same direction. Um, actually, I might I, I might make this a little bit lengthened. I, I think I'll do this. Instead of putting three together, I'll put two together and then one sort of in between so that it gives um, a bit more of a curve around the um, flower and do the same thing for the middle layer. So I've got two once again, and then one that goes in between here and just curling off the side. So again, um, I just wanna make sure that they are positioned in the right way that I want. Now, um, I think that's good. Actually, I'm going to switch this one for this one because it's chunkier and I need the chunky one down at the bottom. Okay, so that's my first level and you can see where we are with that. Oh, um, I think I probably will try doing the same thing because I still had two pieces. So let's just continue to put that around the top. But again, I'm trying to keep the level so that it is, oh, now I'm gonna move everything. It's curling, yes. Okay, so next I'm going to use these pieces that I have. Um, so again, we are just going to lay them so that they can be seen. And I'm just gonna put that right there and right here. And once again, I'm giving thanks to um, Sister Winsome, who blessed me with all of these pieces, these picks that um, she put together. And what I did was just chop them all up and <laughs> make them 
into even smaller pieces so that I could make multiple projects with different um, different arrangements. So um, now that's looking nice, except I'm not, I think I have some extra pieces. So the extra pieces I'm going to put on the lower larger spots because they have more space, obviously. So um, this is where we're at with this. Um, let's try and put this at the back. I'm gonna put this one at the back. And since I have an extra larger piece, I'm gonna put that at the front. So that, again, I'm gonna look at it. Oh, it's looking really pretty. Yes, can you see? So I only have one more level that I have to do, and that is to place these things. I'm just looking to see how much time I have. And I just love this because it's sparkly and it gives a little bit of sparkle to this that you can see I wanted to keep this monochronal, which is virtually all of the same kind of winter white theme um, on here. Um, this one is uh, winter white elegance, that's what I call it. But I still like a little bit of um, the glitz, so I'm just going to add that. And because it's so different in color, it's such a sharp contrast, um, it really makes the whole thing pop. So my longest pieces, of course, I'm going to put at the bottom here and I'm going to stick it so that it lies somewhere on top. And again, for this piece, the middle piece, again, we're going up in layers. Um, let's see if I can have that working for me. So again, we're going up in layers and I like this arrangement. Um, let's put it a little bit there. Yes. Actually, I'm going to switch that piece. Well, no, I think they're about the same piece, same size. And then I have some smaller pieces that I am going to add, but I think I'm gonna pause the video there and then finish off. So here is my finished look. Um, I did actually find in my stash an extra flower. And so since I found it, oh, I should cover those little blotches there. Um, since I found it, I thought I may as well use it. So I have four layers of flowers because I have four plates. I have some sprigs um, that have just been painted um, plastic sprigs. Now you don't have to make them white. I just wanted my my own um, to be all white. But if you want to keep them green, you can keep them green. These extra pieces that were just like cut off some things. And you see all I did was just lay them to the side and stick them out. And um, these little black shiny pieces, which again, if I buy a sprig of something or I have one um, sprig of something, I just cut off all of the pieces and make them into um, lots of, of many small pieces so that I can use them in many projects. So yes, let me turn it this way. This is my finished project for um the um, tear tray and i really like it and i you don't have to use an angel i um found this angel once again in the dollar store and spray painted her white to match but i also have something else which is uh i guess this is a very um nice bauble or topper that's supposed to be on the tree and it's it's lit up and it's the perfect size for and actually i'm going to cut off the ribbon but for now i'll just leave it that way um it's the perfect size for my display 
and I love it. It's come out very nicely. So um, this is just to show you what you can do with a bunch of old plates, some spray paint and some um, recycled or pulled off pieces of whatever you have in the bag and make, make your table um, look very uh, elegant for your Christmas dinner even though it might be with a few people. <laughs> so this display I probably will use um, after Christmas uh, so that, um, you know, we can just change the, 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 the floral stuff. You can use it for any season, put spring flowers on or, you know, Valentine's flowers on or uh, whatever and continually use it. So I hope you um, enjoyed this one and were able to learn how to put something else together. And let's keep Jesus the reason for the season. Blessings, everyone. Um, enjoy a wonderful time, even though we are not together. Uh, we're together in spirit and um, hopefully next year we'll be together in person. Hello TLC family, it's Dalton and John here. We're going to give you some quick pointers on how to change a flat or to help rotate your tires if for whatever, whatever reason you're on the highway you have a flat or you need to change your tires. We're going to give you some quick points of the things you should do and show you how that goes. Great idea Dalton. All right, in the event you get a flat, first of all I got to say Dalton and I are not pros just friendly neighbors and brothers suggesting a little bit of uh, advice that we think is positive. If you get a flat, don't try to change it in traffic. Drive the vehicle with the flat, carefully and slowly, to a safe area. Make sure your body is not in traffic. You're gonna notice that the way we have our car set up, it's away from the road where we're gonna change the tire. All right, is there anything else, Dalton? Yeah, and that advice goes specifically for the highway. If you get a flat on the highway, slow down, pull over to the, the slow lane and get off the very next exit. Do not change a flat on the highway anytime at all. Absolutely. All right, so now we're just gonna get our tools together and uh, go through that. Yeah, so next you need to locate your spare. In every car, it could be different. Most cars, it's in the trunk. You own a van? you're gonna ha have to get a tool out and draw it out. I recommend you read your manual in advance to be prepared for this for your particular vehicle. You don't wanna be caught unawares in an emergency. Anyway, mine is just right here, my spare. I have my special uh, unlocking tool for locking the, taking out the locks on the uh, wheels themselves. And I'll gather up my tools now. Well, we're done Dalton. Uh, I hope that uh, this is going to be helpful to somebody in the future. Um, what do you say we have some tea now? Yeah, I think uh, you owe me that at least. I would say so. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so here are assembled a uh, number of tools that you need. The tools that you absolutely must have is your jack your lug wrench, your jack handle, two chocks, so I suggest you have like two pieces of wood in your car like that. These are optional, these are gloves just to keep your hands clean and safe from getting scuffed or scratched. And uh, a breaker bar, if you drive a truck or an SUV or anything like that, they will be torqued at a higher um, rating than a car. So. A lot of times you need a breaker bar to break the nuts and also to torque your tires back up this is optional this is a, a torque wrench and because I'm lazy and I don't want to do a bunch of nuts all the time I brought my impact wrench but these are optional these you must have okay folks before you lift the car one of the most important things you have to do is you have to loosen the nuts just a little bit right 
So with this particular car, there is a lock nut on there that protects your tires from being stolen and that needs a, a specific key like this one to unlock this particular nut. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. So you make sure it's snug on there. And you take, this is the lug wrench. They're good. So, uh, <laughs> good Lord, John, what happened here? You guys did it. Yeah. So, I'm gonna use the breaker bar for the rest because that was a lot of work. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now that we've done that, we we'll go ahead and do the rest. For this, I'm gonna use the breaker bar just to show you how it works because that was a lot of work on doing that. It wasn't that necessary. Uh -huh. <laughs> So this is a breaker bar. The reason it's called a breaker bar, it only has one purpose, is to break stubborn nuts. It's a longer handle so you get more leverage. So you just fit it in like that. And this should be like butter. See? John is now going to show you, uh, before we lift, we're going to show you how to chalk the tires and also the jack points on this car. Here we go. What is chalking the tire? We want to make sure the vehicle can't roll when we lift it up on the jack. You don't want the jack, the car to move and fall off the jack, it can be hazardous. Chalking the tire just means blocking it so it can't roll. I just learned today from my friend Dalton, hey, you, you chalk the opposite tire from what you're working on. So we're taking off the front right I'm going to chalk the back left. Simple as that. Just tap, tap, you're done. Car can't roll. Now, one point we want to cover that we missed. Uh, you ladies, you could do this yourselves. You don't have to be a big, strong man. There's a tightened nut. You put your, make sure your jack or your uh, wrench is all the way on the nut. Put your foot there and just step down doesn't take a huge a lot of force to open crack the nuts open this is my jack every jack for every car is different you see there's a little slot here that's not because it's broken it's made to go around the metal and hold it in place okay now I'm gonna slide in under here maybe uh, you guys can move the camera in I have to put this jack at a certain jack point in my car it's here I don't know if you guys can see that but this here slot in the jack fits into that space. Okay, here's your jack handle. The jack handle fits in this hole right here. You need two hands for this. Your left hand or right hand, doesn't matter. You hold it with the one hand like that and you slowly turn it until you notice the car starts lifting. Now Dalton, are you lifting that car because you're so big and strong? No. Nope. How much force are you needing to apply to that? I'd say about 10 pounds. See? So a, a young lady could do it, in other words. Definitely. With right. the appropriate gloves. Right. Because the end is pretty sharp, so if you don't have some protection on your hand, you could hurt yourself. So There we go. Sounds like people should have uh, a bunch of stuff assembled in their trunk, just in case, right, Dalton? That's right. I always have a pair of gloves, and... Uh, you know, my drill and a few other things in my car just in case. Yeah. Hey, with winter coming, it's all the way up, Dalton. <laughs> with winter coming, we should have uh, maybe uh, a blanket in our car. What do you think? And a couple candles, too, and a lighter. There you go. And a flashlight, definitely. Because you could get a flat at night. Now, because I did all that uh, hard work, I'm going to cheat and use this. That is your tire removed. So 
So John's gonna bring the spare and show you what a spare looks like. Don't be alarmed that your spare is way smaller than your regular tire. But this should be a reminder to you of what a short period of time you should have this on your vehicle. If you've had a situation where you need to use your spare, you need to get yourself to a garage and get the proper tire put back on. This is not you need it used for uh, regular use of your vehicle. By the speed rating too. It's it's only for emergencies, right? And it's only rated for about 80 kilometers an hour. There you go. <clears throat> and because of how the tire is designed, you'll notice that it's round, not flat. Yeah. It corners terribly. Right. So it's not meant to be driven at the same speeds in corners or even on the straights. Right. So there's safety issues. So like we say, this is just an emergency tire to get you to the nearest shop and get your uh, proper uh, get properly fitted for what you need. Okay, folks. So now we're just gonna put the tire back on. We're gonna line it up uh, and then just slide it back on there. This time you might need your knees for this. There we go. This is how I do it, anyways. So now. I always do it from the bottom most nuts first to get the tire in. So remember the key and the lock nut. You get it to fit together. And because I have fat fingers, I'm gonna use this. You don't have to do it all the way in. You just need to get a couple of turns on that. The key can go here. Now we're just gonna use this and do the same for these nuts. Okay, now I explain to you what's happening right here. Because this particular tire has the recessed nuts, it's hard to get my fingers in there. So I'm trying to use this to put the nut on, but the nut is starting to cross thread. Cross threading is very dangerous, so you gotta be very careful about that. So that one is damaged, so put the start up here. Okay, that one went on, I think. Going on. Yeah. Ah, see? One bead is broken. Dude, that's a, like a metal shard. Yeah, like a, what do you the, call one them? One of the threads broke off. So, okay, let's try again. Oh, there we go now. So, that's on. really just need about two or three turns because then this is going to do all the heavy work. So when tightening your nuts, <laughs> your wheel nuts, when tightening your wheel nuts, you always tighten them like this. Always the one opposite. So you start here it doesn't matter whether it's bottom or top, but when you st whatever one you tighten first, find the one the furthest away on the opposite side and tighten that one next. And then the one furthest away on the opposite side and tighten that one next. Then the one furthest away and so forth and so on. So let's do the key first. Oops, wrong way. there so from this one we'll go here from that one we'll go here from that one we'll go there from this one we'll go here there you go so beautiful the maximum torque on this gun is a hundred and I think 45 John's nuts are supposed to be John's to be at 150. lug nuts are supposed to be at 151 uh, pounds per square inch. So we're going to drop the car, and at this point we're going to use 
the torque wrench to torque these nuts up to 151. So now we've lowered the car, we removed the jack, and so what we're going to do now is torque these nuts to the specified ratings of, from the manufacturer, which is 151 pounds per square inch. So this torque wrench will make a click sound when it reaches that setting. It has an adjustable handle that you can set it for various uh, torque specifications. So here we go. Wow, when you hear that click, it's done. And just the same way, we go to the next one opposite there. So we got to go across the street. So, so the yeah, so we go over there, and do the same thing. You're going to ask a question? Yeah, so if I didn't have a torque wrench, Actually, like I don't, uh, if you're caught on the roadside and you have to change your spare, just go ahead and snug it up as much as you can and then get yourself to a professional as soon as you can. That's just exactly what John said. If you ever are out on the road and you have to do this, obviously most people don't run around with a torque wrench in their car. Just tighten it as best as you can. And then like John said, get yourself to a shop and they will more than be more than happy to just do it for, for you to check it for free. Right. When I was uh, teaching my stepdaughter how to tighten hers, I, she only weighed 120 pounds. I just taught her to stand on the jack, make sure the knight is all the way in, push it down with about half your weight, and that'll be good until you let a pro check it. Okay. So, so now we're all torqued up. These wheels are pretty good. The torque wrench said that all the nuts are in properly. So we're good. We're just going to now clean up and clear up and put things away. Thanks, Dalton. You're welcome, John. Now you pay me that 60 bucks. <laughs> well, we're done, Dalton. Uh, I hope that uh, this is going to be helpful to somebody in the future. Um, what do you say we have some tea now? Yeah, I think uh, you owe me that at least. I would say so. Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs>